All right, Munchkin Butts, this is going to be uh, at least a two-part video series, and the reason why I'm making it is because I think that the average community, no matter what state you're living in, and the reason why I say it doesn't matter what state you're living in, uh, is because organized stalking and gang stalking is happening in every state in the United States. Now, do not let that term organized stalking or gang stalking mislead you into believing that it's gangs that are involved in this. Basically, what I'm going to do is deconstruct for you community members and even for targets so I can uh, brief them on um, how these expeditions operate in part, why in part, who can be involved in part, and um, some of their methods and tactics. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and fly right into the purpose of this video, and I'm going to give you some illustrations um, so you can literally understand okay the mentality behind some of their expeditions and also the mentality behind protecting their expeditions now, organized stalking and gang stalking is directly connected to organized crime members in the system it's a syndicate okay that same syndicate has tentacles out within the community that the, that the syndicate works and lives in they're white and blue collar workers and they can have any type of employment description that your mind can think of Utility personnel, cable installers, phone phone company installers, um, gas and electric employees can be involved in gang stalking. Uh, police officers, firefighters, fire department EMS, uh, regular ambulance EMS, doctors in area hospitals, psychi um, a psychiatrist as well, uh, nurses, administrative staff in hospitals, postal workers. That's right. Uh, schools can be 100% involved in organized stalking expeditions. Hold on a second. I'm going to give you a fast illustration concerning uh, a, 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 an actual thing that is practiced in all different types of corporations. And I'm going to give this illustration is going to be an illustration concerning how the automobile industry has engaged in these methods. I won't be mentioning any specific auto company, but it's just a preliminary introduction for you to be able to see a cost-benefit analysis ra ratio. Just stay with this video because if you do, you will be glad that you did. Yeah. As a result of you becoming a teenager and an adult and then a, you know, like 30, 40, 50, whatever, you have went through enough cars to realize that there's a good chance that you or somebody you know has had their car recalled for no matter what reason. Or you have heard on the radio, read in the newspaper, or saw, or saw that a particular make and model of a car has been recalled. Some of these recalls have to do with life-threatening, um... Uh, defects, whether it be brakes, uh, gas tanks, uh, gas pedals, okay, electrical systems, whatever. Now, what the automobile industry can do, and ha and and or have they done, is what they'll do is they'll look at a cost-benefit analysis. And what does that mean? Well, they look at how many of that particular make and model has 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 been um. Uh, how many of the, uh, how many of that certain make and model has the defect or might have the defect? Okay. Then they look at how many of the cars were sold or trucks or vans or whatever. Okay. And then they look at the type of injury that is res that has come about as a result of the defect. Okay. Are you with me? So we got make, model, defect, and how many cars have been sold. Then what they'll do is do a cost-benefit analysis in reference to would it cost them more to repair it? Okay, or cost them more to settle out of court in reference to the injuries and even deaths that have come about as a result of the defect. And they do, they have, and do they conclude that it would cost more to settle out of court after an injury or death, or would it cost more to fix the defect? And whatever costs less, they can go with. Well, this is organized crime in the system. And they do use this same type of cost-benefit analysis when a targeted individual has been targeted by them for criminal aspirations to produce money and control, control for the money. And if that target becomes a whistleblower, they also have to look at the cost-benefit analysis concerning if that target becomes almost untouchable, they're eventually going to have to face off with that target in court, or there's a great likelihood they will. 
So, what they'll do is continue the gang stalking towards the target until staged events can, bring, can be executed against the target to bring about a desired result to, to, to discredit the target or lock them up in jail. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complex and a little bit interesting. Just stay with me, and then I'm going to make follow-up statements that will help you understand why all this is happening. If you have a police officer and or a prosecutor and or a members of the DA's office, okay, involved in gang stalking or at least being coerced to protect the crime, no matter how much they know about the entire scope of the crime or not, if they are used to aid in the bed in the protection of the crime or to aid in the bed in the crime, then it becomes or it can, can it become obstruction of, just, uh, obstruction of justice, gross negligence of duty, conspiracy under the color of authority, and then any other type of crime that, um, that, can, that can be attached to uh, these criminalities, these penal code violations, including perjury, which is a felony in itself. Okay, so what they do in reference to these individuals being in the system, especially the police officers, because they don't want to lose their jobs because they got pensions to look at, they got their mortgages to look at, they got their families to take care of. So you better be darn, and you better believe a cop don't want to go to jail because we all know what happens to corrupt cops when they go to jail. Oh, yeah, they don't have a nice time at all, at all. So you better believe in these expeditions that these syndicated filthy sewer rat cops who are involved in these expeditions, you better believe they will do anything and everything if they have already become attached to gross negligence of duty against the targeted individual, then you better be darn sure they know it, okay? Because they're in the kinds of employment descriptions where they have to know the penal codes concerning what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do on the job. Okay, and they know that they can be sued if they breach any law. So, since they're using their employment descriptions to aid in the bed in these expeditions, okay, which bring about all different types of crimes, then you better believe that these syndicated police officers and even fire department EMS, okay, and then all the other jobs that are connected to their syndicate, like the doctors, the social services workers, the post employees, okay, and the individuals who work in jobs that can tap into your phone, landline, and or cell phone then you better believe that these syndicated freaks will do everything and anything, in, including continuing to use their employment description to not only further the crime, but to protect them. So, they look at a cost-benefit analysis. If institutions and corporations are involved in these criminal expeditions as well, and they are, you better believe they are. Businesses are involved in gang stalking, which are corporations. Okay, they can be corporations. You can have a small business that's just, just owned by, you know, a family or maybe one or two, three business partners. Or you can have a huge corporation like Ralph's or Walmart's or, you know, whatever. Then you have the institutions, which are universities and colleges. Okay, then you have other places that can be brought on board in the gang stalking of Target, like public libraries. That's a government employment description. So, when we look at how gang stalking is happening in the government, in institutions and in corporations. Gang stalking is nothing but a mutual for profit organization. And basically what it is, it's a mechanism. Of, it's a mechanism of tiered protocols, methods, tactics, and maneuvers and schemes that they bring about against the targeted individual for an original motivation, which is exploitation of the property, the target's finances, and the target themselves. That's right. Now, as a result of all the crimes that happen to a target to bring these three, three things about, you have to, they have to have and use their certain employment descriptions to do it. They are also illegally using their employment descriptions to uh, uh, co connect with each other uh, in reference to, see basically what it is, got to look at it this way. The government, institutions, and corporations are all, are, are all three part of the infrastructure, okay? part of the in infrastructures of America, okay? So if you got these, just these three separate uh, 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 in institutions, government, and then corporations, if you got all three of these working together, using the same types, same type of crime to not only uh, have criminal aspirations for the target, but to also use the same exact crime to protect the crime. What I'm talking about is the maneuvers, math, methods, and tactics that are used to achieve the crime, and then the same ones are used to protect the crime. Because they look at it this way. If a corporation is involved in gang stalking against a whistleblower, 
okay? Or if a syndicate member that works in a corporation decides to flag and tag a person for eventual exploitation, that corporation is already utilizing gang stalking. Because if that corporation ever deems an employee as being a threat, like for sexual harassment lawsuits, uh, uh, intellectual intellectual property theft, or if the or if the corporation is involved in illegal activity and somebody witnesses it, and if somebody witnesses it, whether that person decides to become a whistleblower or not, the corporation once they discover that person is witnessed it, they can target them, and it's all protected by the system because of the money that's generated from it. And then we then and then we eventually have kickbacks to the individuals that played a role in the gang stalking by using their employment descriptions to vilify and nullify the target. So the original motivation can be protected, and or so the crime concerning why the target was picked can be achieved while protecting all the players in the midst of it. So when they look at say if a target like me has acquired undisputable black and white in your face undisputable evidence that I am a victim of this crime and that certain employment descriptions institutions corporations and government officials have played a role in it employees of the government that have played a role in it then they look at a cost benefit analysis they say what will it do cost us more to break her down until we can get a hold of her and throw her in jail or an institution or will it cost us more to settle out of court with her but if we do that there's a good chance the cops will lose their jobs so you better believe that they'll at least pipeline my lawsuit before a syndicated judge who will throw out the evidence throw me back to the wolves okay until the original motivation can be achieved exploitation racketeering, insurance fraud, and human trafficking. That's right. That's right. So, when these individuals, like, let, 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 me, let me give you a, a case in point. Um, uh, let's see, where's that newspaper? This newspaper right here talked about, it's a UCSD Guardian newspaper. And in it, it talked about how the police, this was uh, published on, I don't have my glasses, on December, it appears December 6th or 5th. Okay, and in it it says police still looking for stabbing suspect. Now I read this article and it appears that even UCSD is using a notification system to students, okay, and staff. And I have a feeling those notification systems came about as a result of all these school shootings. But innocent targeted individuals who have been put on the list that had never had anything at all to do with any university that is using these notification systems for other reasons can be put on that university's notification system once the target is flagged and tagged by the government if the government's involved in the gang stalking of them or if a, if a person is being gang stalked by a corporation once they're put on the list they're then their name is then shared on the government list the institution list and the corporation list. And then the whole campaign of gang stalking that works within these three separate infrastructure areas, okay, are notified. As a result, whenever the targeted individual walks into any business, university, or government building, they are gang stalked. And they're also gang stalked out without in the, within the community because the police also have these community notification systems which are being illegally and criminally used like but not limited to the community notification the sexual offenders notification and the offenders notification now these are three uh, specific notification um, uh, re uh, law enforcement resources resource tools are supposed to be used for uh, in, in order to put offenders who have lit who have actually committed crime on these lists before they get out of jail that way the community can keep an eye out for who they are, where they, you know, where they might be moving to, and so on and so forth. So, so people can protect their property, their kids, their loved ones, and their businesses. Okay, and that's understandable. But what these people are doing, because what we got to understand here, is that think about this: these notifications are were made supposedly to put criminals on that might get released from jail or a mental hospital or a group home or whatever. Okay. So the community can watch them to make sure that they don't hurt anybody or rob anybody. That's right. That's right. But what they're doing, the individuals that are in the system that have access to these community notifications, are putting illegally, totally, completely innocent people on these notification lists that should not be on them for any reason at all. And then they combine it with a lie and a slander campaign. Now you can go to Google to give you a preliminary introduction in reference to how easy it is to dupe anybody to do anything for a person who's got a, a 
a appearing position of authority or a legal position of authority, like a badge, to do anything for that person who's got the appearing position of authority, to do anything for him as a result of him soliciting them to do things for him, go to YouTube and type in listen to a stranger. Okay? Now, the harassment that a targeted individual experiences are many. Okay? Anywhere from overt harassment to direct assaults, rapes, deliberately and intentionally co covertly creating homelessness of targets by getting landlords and property owners on board, by sta staging vehicle accidents so the targeted individual has nowhere to sleep once the homelessness is created. And a staged vehicle accident usually happens before the homelessness is created. Covertly blacklisting the target from employment. That's where the Chamber of Commerce syndicate members come into play out. That's right. That's right. Okay? So, and then, so what we got to do, what we got to uh, try and understand here is that these law enforcement notification systems are being illegally and criminally used for criminal motivations. And the target who's put on them is completely, 100% completely lied about, okay, and made out to look like a social deviant, a criminal, mentally ill, or a threat to themselves or others. As a result, the people who get these community notifications are told where the target's at on any given day and what to do around the targeted individual. In order to produce at least stress and duress for the target, they can stage an event which will produce an, uh, an arrest, a falsified police report, and or petitioning the target into county mental health or a area neighborhood psychiatric floor, you know, or an area neighborhood hospital psychiatric floor. This is all done for discrediting purposes and for to start accumulating documentation over time. That's right. These falsified police reports, incident reports, campus safety reports, doctor reports are all used in conjunction together to take eventual syndicated probate control of the target so they can co-opt co their finances, legal guardianship, and to place them in a syndicated run group home these organized crime syndicates own. Now, each one of these homes can house anywhere between 7 to 11 to even 15 people. That's right. So you think about it, you got one house with at least 7 to 11 people in it. All of them have had their finances co-opted and or benefits federal and state have been applied for in their names. Okay? So you got 7 to 11 people where the owner of that house, who's running it, okay, is getting the checks for each and every one of those people. They're straw people. They're being treated like straw people to, in order for them to apply for benefits in their name as a result of them claiming that they can, the person cannot take care of themselves or that they're a threat to themselves or others or that they're uh, mentally ill. So basically the whole entire scheme that's happening to a target is based on eventual exploitation of a target, racketeering, insurance fraud, and human trafficking, all happening in one environment that they are illegally and, and, and illegally probately put in as a result of every aspect of their personal lives and independence being torn down covertly through schemes and methods, put them out on the street, initiate these staged events which produce the police to be called, they come out and they make the falsified police report. Then another event happens over time. Then another event. Then another event. Then another event. Then another event. And then the police start petitioning the target in a county mental health or area neighborhood hospital psychiatric floor. That's where the insurance fraud come into play at and the illegal criminal uh, diagnoses are made on paper because it's the paper they need to get the syndicated probate control. Basically what they're doing is flipping houses. They're flipping houses. The expedition continues in these houses. That's right. So the target can be blamed for the incidents that occur in the houses, and then they're told they got to go into the back into the hospital to get on different medication because they're still out of control. These are scheduled events that happen in the houses, and that's done so the insurance can be booked again. That's right, insurance fraud. Then the target is also human trafficking in these homes. That's where pornography comes into play at. That's where the human trafficking comes into play at, and sexual exploitation, and voyeurism. And I'm talking about drugging the target's drink and or food, okay? That's right, and then once the target's knocked out, men are brought in to have sex with that woman or men are brought in to have sex with that young man. Video pictures are taken of it and then sold to pornography groups. That's right. Or syndicate members are paid off with the sex in reference to something they did for the syndicate and so they're being paid off with the sex. So, we're talking about the complete, total destruction of a person's complete life for money by people that they do not know at all. Now you know about AIDS, right? 
okay? So I'm talking about how these filthy sewer rats that are in the system are doing this to average American citizens who are vulnerable, like people on disability, single mothers, single women, people on, uh, uh, single fathers, single young men, because there's a lot of homosexuals in these syndicated, uh, human trafficking rings. You better believe it. You would not believe the money they're making off the voyeurism, which is pornography. Now, we're talking about completely, I mean, absolute, completely innocent human beings who had literally done that one thing wrong, who were targeted because they were observed in the community by these perpetrators, okay, then they were watched to see how vulnerable they are, and once they ascertained that they could probably get away with it as a result of them being vulnerable, boom, the campaign starts. That's right. But, if a target's lucky enough to be able to afford video cameras and tape recorders and then catch undisputable proof including their mistakes, then that lawyer, then that target is a step closer to hopefully finding an uncorrupted lawyer. They know that's a threat. You better believe it is because the police and all the other syndicated, uh, well the syndicated cops and all the other syndicated individuals in the system gotta watch their butt and protect what they have it, what they did and then what they didn't do because a lot of these people are in employment descriptions who are, that are actually supposed to be advocating for victims of crime. So, my name is Elsie Williams and I'm making this video on... Uh, December 8th, 2013. And I decided to make this video because I am a human trafficking target. I am also a gang stalking target. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I want you to be able to understand not only the motivations that they have for targeted individuals, but the people and the employment descriptions and the places that these criminalities can happen at and how it comes about. Okay? They will stage an event for a targeted individual to experience. And that staged event can also have staged witnesses. They will then blame everything on the target and either arrest the target, file a false police report, a false incident report, or petition the target into county mental health. All this is done for insurance fraud, eventual probate control, and human trafficking. A totally, 100%, completely innocent human being who has done nothing wrong whatsoever. They are the literal victims of this crime. Now, I'm about ready to show you right now a video file of what happened to me on a sidewalk on Thanksgiving Day. And, uh, ooh, hold on a second. Okay. And basically what they're doing with me in part is getting along all my routes and repeating gang stalking everywhere I go. That's done to remind me that I'm a victim of this crime. That's done to keep the reality of the victimization in the conscious forefront of my daily experiences everywhere I go. That's right, by repeating the name of the crime. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is two individuals on a sidewalk threatening me, and while they're threatening me, they're saying gang stalk, gang stalking, and then gang of stalking, I'm going to F you up. Now, one of these individuals has harassed me on between 8 and 11 separate occasions. Listen to this. Alright, the following took place on Thanksgiving Day. One of the individuals involved in this event is directly connected to G-I-L-L times 2, I'm a woman, not a man, H-A location. And this individual has been used on at least anywhere between 8 and 11 separate occasions concerning overt and at times direct harassment. Do you hear these guys say...